Victoria, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for I having really me. appreciate it. I know nothing when it comes to baby led weaning. When my little ones were um, infants, as I mentioned before, I started by adding rice cereal to their breast milk and then sometimes to formula because they did supplement. Um, I would mix it and kind of make it a little thicker consistency and it literally, I did like one little stage at a time, going from breast milk and formula to like the rice milk, the rice cereal in the milk and then I and then I did stage one foods. I did not make my own food. I, I Does that make me a bad mom or my, my kids okay? Yeah, they're fine. Um, you're gonna find the way that you like. But what I wanna talk about today is what Maria did, this baby led wing. What is it? I, it's confusing to me. So yeah, I had no idea either. This was, I'm a first time mom. I had my daughter about two years ago. And when, She's so cute. when, it, when the time came, I definitely took to Pinterest and the internet yeah. and looked at all my different options. And I really liked the idea behind baby led weaning was um, the baby is feeding themselves. Like the baby leads it. Literally, right. the baby leads it. Okay. Yes, exactly. And I liked the idea of her choosing the food she wanted to try and right. um, her learning how to pick it up and put it in her mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just, I've always just wanted to have a very adventurous eater. So I thought yeah. that this was a way yeah. to do that, like give her the freedom. Yes. Um, oh my gosh, things have changed yes, so much. Oh so gosh. much. And there's nothing against purees either. I just yeah. really didn't have the time for it because yeah. I was just back to work. And But I have my sisters have kids too. Mm -hmm. They did a combination of both. They did. Um, and I know that it can be a little nerve wracking to try baby led weaning mm -hmm. because there, there's a risk for choking as well which was right. a little it was a little scary but uh, just a little terrifying. just a little scary <laughs> <laughs> so like for instance i'm sorry to cut you off yeah but, like when my little one was you know like i said four months old i felt okay doing the little cereal then doing like you know maybe a little bit of fruit or whatever so you didn't do any of that no okay you waited until i think it's six months six months and i started like with very very soft foods and okay. like steamed them to the point where they were basically purees but they still kept their shape and they were able to pick them up with their hands okay okay so like give me an example like i, I see i we have a plate here of food i can't take my eyes off it because yeah I, like i said so i actually started with avocado um, and it is very slimy so I read that you keep the skin on so that they can pick it up and it doesn't slip out I of their it. hands and then the top part they put in their mouth and they try the food that way oh um, my gosh are you serious yeah and it's like a whole food I just feel like it's such a healthy a healthy thing like a right. healthy way right you know what I mean because the stuff that I was giving my little ones I think um, you know, all the ingredients, like they have to put so many preservatives in it if it's store-bought, so. Yeah, it's an it's, avocado and it looks like an avocado. Yeah. So they're learning like what food looks like as Aww. well. So yeah. Right. And then we did a lot of carrots, a mm -hmm. lot of zucchini and just cut them into like finger, finger size. Yeah. Like, like shapes. Like grabbable because. Yeah. Like, and then I, we would steam them and then just put them on the plate and let her her go for it. And you did this after she was able to sit up by herself. Yes. Right. Correct. Um, so that was around six months for you. Every baby's different, you guys. So you can't just, you know, you can't just mark it on the calendar. You have to really, really pay attention and let your baby give you cues. Yeah. Because I think you mentioned earlier, um, like you were eating and your baby was just grabbing. She would grab at it. And just stalking me. I could, I would watch her eyes like follow my fork <laughs> to my mouth. So that was about when I knew as well. I love it. I love it. And so one other thing that I was, um, thinking about is she didn't have teeth, right? Right. Okay. So that's why it's important to really like make sure the food is super Very soft. Very steamed. Yeah. Very Or soft. really ripe. Like if you're going to use a pear, make sure that it's like almost brown, a banana, okay. very ripe. You want it to be mashable. Mashable, yes. okay. So whereas with pureed foods that I did, look, I'm like obsessed with this. this I love this little yes. bowl. I love this. Um, like, so back in the day, like when I was doing my babies with purees, I would literally like one bite at a time and like watch them and then swallow and like, you know, they would maybe go, <clears throat> they'd have that tongue thrust reflex, you know, you yes. get to their mouth, it comes right back out. Yes. So when you would do this, like, what would she do? Would she literally just eat it? She'd kind of like toss it around in her mouth a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then it took her a while to like really start swallowing. And you do need to 
be aware that they are going to gag. Some of the textures are a little off-putting to the baby, and that was right. a little nerve-wracking, yeah. too, because you would think that they were choking, but really they're just gagging from the different textures. Yeah. Um, I also liked another point that I wanted to bring up was I liked the element of play, too. Like, they didn't have to eat it. She didn't eat it right away. Like, she yeah. kind of played with it at first. Yeah. And these plates were kind of nice for it, too, because they could, like put one in one container, one yeah. in the other, and there was, like, adding a new element of play, which I was oh always gosh, looking for. Oh, my gosh, she made it so fun. Yeah. I literally was like, open up, the train is coming. Like, here comes the train. And I would get frustrated sometimes if he, would, he wouldn't swallow it all or it was taking too long and, like, I have a million and one things to do. Right. I mean, it would get all over his face. It was a huge mess. And, I mean, sometimes he wouldn't even, he didn't even want it at all, which is why I actually really like this because, you know, how much stuff I threw away oh my gosh, if I had something great. like this. And then, too, I could bring this with me. But I suppose you could bring that with you, too, like if yes, you're out and about. Definitely. Right? You could bring the plate or, I mean, for me, before COVID, I would honestly just put it on the table for her yeah. to just grab well I mean whatever. I would bring one of these this yeah, is so bad dude don't yes. put anything on a table <laughs> not I'm anymore just super germaphobe. I think everybody needs to know child and infant CPR and I think everybody needs to make sure they know that germs are everywhere and they're gonna freak me out so anyway um I, make sure your baby's hands are clean if they're going to be feeding themselves with their hands, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. Um, also, remember, I think it's important what you said about it being um, like like this big or finger size because your baby is not able to, they don't have the pincer grasp, grasp yet. So that's why they do, they call it palming. They palm everything. So you want that food to be big enough for them to grab. Right. Right? I imagine it'd be really yes. frustrating and not, not going to happen. Right. Um, Here's the, yeah, another example was the banana was okay. like good for their little hands to grab and it has the skin on there so oh my it gosh. creates like a grip for them wow instead of it being slimy so wow yeah and I think it's important too when you're doing this your child is supervised 100% of the time yes. just like when I would like spoon feed my babies because like for me personally that little Ryan thing would make me nervous you know right. like what if that comes off right. your mouth you want to be really careful choking like you said it's still a huge hazard yeah this um, isn't something you just set the food down in front of them yeah. and walk away you definitely need to like watch over them while they're eating yeah to make sure that they're not choking and for me I would put her in the um I actually use this high chair and I would put her in without the straps on in case she did choke and I needed to like, like pop her, her in the quick. back. Yeah. Yeah. And you were right there with her. Yeah, the whole exactly. Time. You, you do need to definitely supervise. This isn't something you just set in front of them and walk away right. and it sounds throw like, a load of laundry. It sounds a lot easier. I mean, <laughs> yes. it does sound a lot easier. Yes. I, I feel like that would be a great, I think that would be a good benefit of it that it does seem a little bit easier, but you still have to be right there supervising. Definitely. I feel like it's really nutritious, but I, I think it's important to know that you're not, your infant is not getting all the, their nutrition from this. Um, like you mentioned um, to me earlier, we were having a chat. That they're learning about textures. They're learning how to chew. They're actually gumming these foods. It's like a whole new world. But you're still giving them their breast milk or, or the formula. Right. I mean, you don't stop that just because you're starting this. Right. So it kind of takes the pressure off. I wish somebody would have told me that. Right, you know what they I mean? Like, the nutrition like if the they food. don't finish these mashed whatever I'm giving them, yeah. you know, are they going to be okay? Yeah, they're going to be fine because yeah, you're also doing your bottles. So. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, do you only do like fruits then? You know, avocados are fruit. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so I tried. What I read too was to start with the foods that they won't like as much, which is the vegetables and meats. So, really? Because they're obviously going to like the fruits <gasps> because of the sugar. So you want to try to introduce the vegetables first. Okay. And and often, so like your especially your bitter foods like broccoli and spinach. Yeah. Yeah. They're not gonna like it right away, but you have to just keep introducing it. And the more that it's around them and it's available, then they're they're more willing to try it. So I did actually start with avocado and then move to vegetables because I knew that yeah. it was gonna be hard to get them to try the vegetables right. once you gave them the fruit. Right. So wow. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. To this day, my um, my little ones don't like a lot of vegetables, and and you know I chose as a mom, and and you guys will do the same thing. My whole thing, my whole my slogan as a mom was pick and choose your battles. Exactly. I am not gonna like. I'm not going to lose my, my mind yeah. over my kid doesn't like broccoli. He, he just doesn't. He right. still doesn't like broccoli. Some yeah. people just don't like broccoli. And she did before she, once she hit one years old too, the, yeah. it went away. Like I can't get her to eat broccoli now, but she, she really? tried it when she was little, 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. And it was steamed. We're not talking raw. No, nothing no, no. raw. Yeah, nothing very raw. Very steamed and mashable. And yeah. Like almost mush, but like yeah. still intact to where she can grab it and feed herself. Wow. Yeah. How amazing. Yeah, like, it was amazing to watch her like explore and to just try world. new things. I mean, yeah. like I'm thinking of all the things I probably could have given my boys instead of all the things that I did give them. If I, I'm not going to have another one, but if I did, I think I might. <laughs> I might try it. Yeah. I really do. I really do. I highly recommend it. Really? Yes. And now you did that. Did you, would you do like meat too? Like fish? I would do not fish right away. Uh I would do, I would make like little turkey meatballs and kind of mash them up and like little pieces (laughs) where she could grab them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then our doctor told us to stay away from shellfish just in case she was allergic, that the allergy can be pretty bad. And then look, I'm going to, I'm going to put Marie on the spot. (laughs) Under one, what else do you need to avoid? Honey. Honey. Do not give your infant honey. It can make them really, really sick. So please wait till after a year for that. Right. Also, I think it's really important. Don't, if, if you're doing foods like this and um and if you're making little mini meatballs yeah. don't add a lot of salt right um don't add a lot of sugar your baby doesn't need it right i love this whole food idea and i do think like making little meatballs and giving your child bits of your own food i think it's great as long as you're having a healthy diet yeah. you don't want to just give your kid a bunch of like processed stuff right. i think that's really important for an infant not to Absolutely. have a lot of processed stuff for Absolutely. sure um well i'm i'm intrigued I can I can honestly say for the first time I'm actually excited to have grandchildren one day because you can I try it out. I'll be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna do baby yes, like Katie. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And hopefully, um, I can still use these. Although by then, by the time I'm a grandmom, they're probably gonna come out. Babies are gonna be like, Rrr. yeah. No, themselves. these plates are great. I still use them to this day. With, yeah. So from six months and now she's about almost two and a half. And this I still one, use these. this one sticks too. Yeah, it does, and oh it has my a gosh. little suction I love they it. have to pop that they really can't really get their little fingers I love it. to pop it out yeah so. oh my gosh I love it um another thing that somebody or actually I think I think I actually my little neighbor did this she loves her spoon like she loves to chew oh, yes. on it she I guess because yes. kids when they're teething and so um this look how flexible this is they she love can literally to chew on those. like gnaw on this yes. so it's like I mean, you can even have a couple different spoons, like one where she's kind of gnawing and chewing right. and getting familiar with putting things in her mouth, like, you mm-hmm. know, um, and then one that you're like, well, actually, you're not going to use it if your baby led. Exactly. Oh my God, my <laughs> mind is blown. So if you're doing baby led weaning, you're... The- you just give them the spoon and they, they'll they probably chew on it. She'll chew she'll on chew it, She'll chew yeah. on it right away. And, and maybe then, do some music. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. then eventually they'll learn that oh my from gosh. watching you too, that... You use it to eat. I love as it. Well. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, a baby, you can really do like yogurt or something, right? So you could dip the spoon in yeah. and then. And actually, for yogurt, I would freeze like little, I would like kind of put them and freeze them yeah. to where they were like little tabs and she could pick them up and then they would like melt in her mouth. So that was a way to do maybe like I, I'm done. yogurt. I, can't take, well. I cannot take but it. But I did do like oatmeal. I would give her the spoon and like. Oh. I would add like a little cinnamon and like peanut butter to build up her tolerance for the peanut peanut allergy. Okay, let's talk allergies. I literally had a heart attack when she said peanut butter because once she gets school age, you can't even bring a nut into a school you because these these kids are so highly allergic to stuff. Right. So you're gonna want to introduce like let's say we do avocado today. We're gonna do avocado today, tomorrow, the next day. Right. We're not gonna introduce like little mini meatballs the same day that we do avocado, or we're not gonna do peanut butter the same day we do whatever, banana, because then you don't know what, you know, what's causing the allergy, right? And an allergy when it's from food, like most people think swollen lips, you know, lips are going to swell, maybe hives or whatever can cause diarrhea, can cause, um, even diaper rash. I mean, pay attention to your baby's skin, your baby's bowels, everything. And think what are, what have they been putting in their body? So that's important too. Definitely. For sure. Um, well, this is really exciting and I just want to thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is great. I have to say though, like, like, teach myself a lot about it so it's nice to share with other people i have my only complaint what can you please bring olive next time yes, because she's so absolutely. cute yes, oh, thank you, you. Love her. Thank she's you. literally precious <laughs> thanks for being here with thank us today you. for basil babies moments and milestones <laughs> let us know if this was helpful for you um let us know what you're doing is there something new that we don't even know about yet what's the next thing is baby led weaning going to be the future of introducing solid foods 
or is there gonna be something new? Or are you old school like me and you <laughs> pop a top and use a little spoon and or mash up your own stuff? I mean, whatever works for you. Every baby's different, every mom is different, but the bottom line is it's all about safety and love and growth and development and enjoying your baby while they're little because soon they'll be smelly and hairy and it's just all downhill from there <laughs> so next time you have to bring her you promise i absolutely promise awesome i'm yes. hungry can i actually yes. let's eat <laughs>